Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to sit down and do a bit of a product feature with you guys. Now recently I did an Ulta haul where I shared with you guys some of the things that I picked up from my local Ulta. And I wanted to sit down and put one of those particular products to the test. So today we are going to be trying out the Makeup Revolution. This is the Vitality palette. This was $7 at Ulta, which is really a amazing an amazing deal for a palette with this many shadows. There are, I should have counted these before, three times five, 15. This palette does come with 15 shadows. And as I mentioned before, a lot of people have compared this to the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. So today I want to sit down and just kind of create a look using this palette and let you guys know my first impressions of it and if I think it was worth the $7 that I spent on it because let's be honest, I think $7 is a great price for a palette but if it doesn't perform well, then it's really just a waste of $7. So if you guys are interested in seeing what I create using this palette and how it performs, then let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so let's jump in. I've already put on my foundation, my concealer, I have my eyebrows on and a little bit of setting powder and we're gonna just jump straight in to the palette. I did already prime my eyes using the Tarte Shape Tape just to give them kind of a nice clean slate to start out with. So for today's look, I really want to try and use these two brighter pink shades. These are kind of the shades that with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, those are the shades that kind of intrigue me but also sort of terrify me because they're just really outside of my comfort zone. I really just generally stick with kind of boring as mud, browns and golds and champagne colors. That's just kind of what I do on a daily basis. So I really want to push myself to use these colors because I think they're just different from what I usually use. So I want to really put those to the test. Now, because I am a bit of a chicken, I'm not sure how much of those colors I will use. I think baby steps is the best way to go. But I'm going to start off by going in with this kind of top um, second from the corner shade. This is just a really kind of camel color transition shade. This is just looks like just kind of your classic um, perfect transition shade. These are the exact type of shades that I always love to use in my kind of as my starting point for my transition. And I like to put these kind of slightly above my crease area. If you're someone that has a very large brow bone like I do, I have very minimal lid space and a whole lot of space here up on my brow bone. I always like to take my transition shade kind of higher just to sort of minimize the effect of that brow bone area. I'm being pretty sloppy with this. I'm not too precise, just really kind of giving a good wash of color. This is just kind of our starting point. All the other colors will kind of get a little bit more refined as we go along and just hopefully kind of all blend into each other. I'm pretty impressed with the pigmentation of this color though. I think it's building up pretty nicely. So next I'm going to go in with this kind of light brown camel color and I'm going to put that just a little bit lower on my crease area. I'm just using kind of a fluffy, slightly flat. This is a Coastal Sense brush that's kind of like the MAC 217 but it's actually, let me show you, I have the so here is the MAC 217. This is the Coastal Sense brush. You can see it's basically the same shape, but this is just a little bit bigger, which I actually love because I think this working with the 217 brush is a really good um, combination to kind of build up color on my lid or on my crease. Usually I will use my 217 brush to really kind of put my more usually my deeper shades kind of to darken up my crease a little bit more because it is smaller. It's a great brush. I've I've talked I talk about that brush I feel like all the time in my tutorials in my chat on my channel, but it really is. If you have smaller eyes, I think the MAC 217 brush, honestly, you could probably do an entire eyeshadow look with that brush because it's so great at placing color, but it's also really good at blending color out. So I'm going to go in with this darker berry shade here. I'm going to take my MAC 217 brush. I'm just going to start kind of applying that into my crease area. I kind of just want this color to basically just peek through a little bit. I don't want it to be too, too obvious or too vibrant. And then I just take kind of what's left on my brush and start pulling that into my crease, like all the way across. Now I'm going to go in with this darkest brown shade in this palette and take a very small kind of fluffy blending brush 
and I'm just going to kind of start darkening up that very outer corner. I like to start right where my upper and lower lash line meet. Just kind of in circular motion start placing it there and then pulling it slightly up and over into my crease. I'm going to go in with my lid shade. I'm going to take this kind of shimmery, it's kind of a pink toned champagne color. I'm going to just use my finger to apply that all over my lid. This one is not too bad. It's not the best shimmer I've ever used, but it's definitely pretty good. Then I'm going to go back into just that blending brush that had that kind of middle shade on it and just start blending out the edges of that shimmery shade. Just want to be careful not to go over my lid because I don't want to take away any of that kind of shimmery intensity just along the edges. All right, guys, now I want to start building up the lash line. I don't think I'm going to take the pink color on my lash line. I'm just going to take those first two transition colors that I use. So I'm going to start with this kind of camel color. Okay, and then with that same brush, I'm going to take a mixture of that kind of lash shade and the darker brown and just start putting that just kind of right there in the corner, maybe the outer third of my lash line. Can you hear that noise? We got one of those robot vacuums for Christmas and it's kind of noisy. If you've ever considered getting a robot vacuum, I highly, highly recommend it. I haven't had to sweep my floor since Christmas. It does such a good job. I'm going to take just that dark brown shade and just kind of from the very corner of my outer bottom lash line just kind of draw that up to kind of connect it to the top area here just so everything looks nice and seamless. Now I'm just going to go apply some liner and some mascara. Today I am using the Catrice Cole Kajal Liner. This is the color, so I think this is in the color Chalk Waves 140. It's just a dark chocolatey brown. And then I'm going to put on a couple of coats of mascara and I will be right back. All right, so that is it for the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my face. I'm going to start by putting on some of my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. And I just want to keep things pretty pretty soft. This is a really nice bronzer if you want it to look pretty soft and natural because it's not overly pigmented or bright. It's very buildable, kind of natural looking. Then I'm going to take my Milani powder blush in the color T Rose and just put a touch of this on the apples of my cheeks. For lips today, I'm going to go in with my MAC Viva Glam 2. And then on top of that, I'm going to go in with my Lorac Alter Ego Lip Gloss in the color Goddess. This is just kind of a dusty purple sort of shade. I love these two lip products paired together are perfection. 
All right, guys, so this is the finished look. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with this palette by Makeup Revolution. I know it's only my first time using it, and I did only use, I think, four or five of the shadows in this palette, so I definitely need to give it some time. I'll try to make sure that I do a haul update in the next couple of weeks just to let you guys know um, once I've had a chance to try it out several times really what my thoughts are on it. Everything went on really well. It had really great pigmentation. It blended really nicely. The colors were very beautiful. I thought the mattes especially were kind of the star of this palette. The shimmer was definitely good but I've, I've probably tried some better shimmers in my lifetime but definitely worth the seven bucks. I don't know how this wears quite yet. I'll see how it wears today and then as I use it over the next couple weeks and let you guys know in the haul update that I do coming up. If you are in the market for a warmer tone palette and say you don't have the 40 or 50 dollars to spend on the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette, this is definitely a great alternative. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Again, I will be back in another week or so to let you guys know kind of a more detailed review on how this palette wore, what it um, longevity was like, if I had any problems with some of the other shades in the palette. So be sure to check back for that. But thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel today. Please be sure to subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye bye. To spend on the modern, I cannot say modern renaissance. <laughs> it's so hard.